In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve optimization problems involving rectangles. Suppose you have 120 meters of fencing and you want to build a rectangular yard. What should the dimensions of the yard be to maximize its area? To answer this question, we're going to start off by drawing a diagram. So we've got a rectangular yard, so we make a rectangular diagram. And now let's assign variables that reflect what we want to find. We want to find the dimensions of the yard, so let's assign one variable for each, for each dimension of the yard. Um, x can be the vertical dimension, and then y can be the horizontal dimension. Okay, now it's time to write some functions. Um, so our objective function is the thing that we want to maximize or minimize. Um, you can remember it by what is our objective here? What are we trying to do? Well, we're trying to maximize the area. So the objective function needs to be the area of the, of the, um, of the yard. So area, we can refer back to our diagram. The area is just the uh, dimensions multiplied. Area is just x times y. So our objective function is going to be area equals x times y. And this is the thing that we're going to want to maximize. Um, and we'll, we'll get around to that later. Um, but first of all, we need, to, we need to consider our constraint here. Our constraint is some sort of limitation that we have. And our limitation here is the 120 meters of fencing. Um, we can't build a yard with more than 120 meters of fencing because 120 meters is all we have. So our, our constraint is going to refer to the perimeter of the yard. The perimeter can only be 120 meters. Um, so let's write perimeter equals 120. And let's write the perimeter in terms of x and y. Um, so perimeter is just x plus another x plus y plus another y, the sum of the sides around. So that's all in all, that's just 2x plus 2y. So 2x plus 2y equals 120. Okay, so we're trying to maximize this objective function subject to this constraint equation. Um, right now we've got two different things. We've got a function and a constraint equation, um, and we want to combine them into a single function that we can maximize. Um, so the way we do this is we substitute this constraint equation into the objective function. Um, so in order to do that, we're going to have to solve the constraint equation for one of the variables and then plug in that variable into the objective function. Um, so let's, let's start off by writing our constraint equation right here. We've got 2x plus 2y equals 120. And let's say that we want to solve for, uh, how about y? We could solve for x too, but um, I'm just going to choose y here. So let's do that. Let's, let's solve, let's subtract 2x. We get 2y equals 120 minus 2x. And then we'll divide by 2 and get y equals 60 minus x. Now we can go ahead and plug that into our objective function. Um, so let's write down our objective function. Area equals x times y. And then when we plug this in, we get area equals x times 60 minus x. And we'll just expand it out. Area equals 60x minus x squared. Great. So now we've got a single function that reflects both the objective and the constraint. Um, when we try to maximize this function, we'll be maximizing our area um, subject to this constraint. So we can just go ahead and maximize and not worry about um, the constraint at all because it's already factored into this equation. All right, so our, our task, in order to maximize the area, we have to find the stationary points because the maximum occurs at a stationary point. So how we find the stationary points, um, we find those by setting a prime equal to zero. We have to take the derivative of area and then set that equal to zero. So let's, let's go ahead and take the derivative of 60x minus x squared and set that equal to zero. Well, the derivative of 60x minus x squared, uh, derivative of 60x is just 60, and the derivative 
of x squared is just 2x, so 60 minus 2x equals 0. And we'll go ahead and solve this. Uh, minus 60 on both sides, and we get negative 2x equals negative 60. And then divide by negative 2 and get x equals 30. Okay, so that is our stationary point. That is where um, either a maximum or a minimum of this um, of this objective function uh, occurs. So um, now, in order to in order to determine that it's a maximum, we want to maximize the area. We use the second derivative test. Um, we can kind of already tell that it's a maximum because it's the only stationary point. But just to be thorough, we're going to use the second derivative test to make sure that this is in fact a, a maximum. So second derivative test um, is where we evaluate the sign of the second derivative. Um, so let's go ahead and first find an expression for the second derivative. a double prime equals, that's the derivative of a prime. So we just have to differentiate what we got right here for a prime. So 60 minus 2x prime, and that equals, well, the 60 goes away because that's just a constant. And then the derivative of negative 2x is negative 2. So, okay. So if we plug in um, a prime of x equals 30, the result is still negative 2. Um, it's, it's negative 2 for all inputs. Um, but the important thing here is that negative 2 is less than 0. So by the second derivative test, we know that we are at a maximum. So, so in fact, x equals 30 is a maximum of the area subject to that constraint. Um, so that gives us our result. Um, our result is that uh, the x dimension is 30. So let's draw our little square, x equals 30. And then y, we can uh, go back to solve for y here. Um, where did we have y? Oh, we had y right over here when we solved for y in the constraint equation. So we can go ahead and evaluate this. Um, y equals 60 minus, plug in x is 30, 30 equals 30. Um, okay, so our dimensions are just 30 and 30. So, so final answer, we've got a 30 by 30 square. 30 by 30 square. Um, has 120 meters of fencing. We can double check that. 30 plus 30 plus 30 plus 30 is like 30 times 4, which is 120 meters. And that is a stationary point, which is a maximum of the objective function once we've substituted in the constraint. So this maximizes the area um, while retaining 120 meters of perimeter. Here's another optimization problem involving rectangles. You need to build a 50 square meter rectangular yard and you want to minimize the amount of fencing you use. You decide to attach the yard to your house so that the house forms one side of the yard. And what dimension should the yard have? Uh, so this is a more complicated setup than the previous problem, but we've got a diagram right here. Um, we've got our three sides of fencing and then the fourth side is formed by the house. So there's no fencing there. Um, so first, first step, let's assign variables to this diagram. Um, so again, we'll just let x be the vertical and y be the horizontal. And our objective function, what is our objective here? Um, we want to minimize the amount of fencing we use. So the amount of fencing is just the perimeter. We want to minimize the perimeter. So let's write, let's write a function for the perimeter perimeter is just equal to uh, the sum of our sides. So we've got x, y. Um, we don't count the house as a side because there's there's no fencing there. Um, so just, um, just an x and two y's. So perimeter is just x plus two y. Okay, and now what is our constraint? What is our limitation here? Um, our, our limitation is that we need to build a 50 square meter yard. 
the the area of the yard has to be 50 square meters. Um, so let's write that down. Area has to be 50. And let's express area in terms of our variables x and y. Uh, While well, the area is still just x times y. So we write x times y equals 50. Okay, so now it's time to uh, combine our objective function and our constraint equation into a single function. Um, so we do this again by solving in the constraint equation. We solve for one of the variables and then we substitute it into the objective function. Um, so let's write down our constraint equation again. We've got x times y equals 50. And why don't we solve for y again? So uh, divide both sides by x and we get y equals 50 over x. And now we can plug this into the objective function. Uh, so let's write down our objective function first. p equals x plus 2y. And then we plug in our y here for the y in the perimeter function. Uh, p equals x plus 2 times 50 over x. And let's just go ahead and simplify this. And we get p equals x plus 100 over x. OK, great. So this is our, our new objective function that has incorporated the constraint into it. We can maximize this um, without worrying out about the constraint equation anymore, uh, because it's just built into the function. OK, so how do we maximize it? Well, the um, or sorry, how do we minimize it? We're minimizing the perimeter. Um, how do we minimize the perimeter? Uh, we, we find the stationary points. The extrema occur at stationary points. Um, so both maximums and minimums will occur there. Uh, in this case, we're minimizing, but it's the, same, it's the same procedure as before. We take the derivative of the objective function, which has the constraint substituted. So we take the derivative of this, take p prime, and we set it equal to zero. So p prime, let's just put in our expression for p. p is x plus 100 over x. The derivative of that has to be equal to 0. Uh, so the derivative of x is just 1. And then derivative of 100 over x, well, derivative of 1 over x is just negative 1 over x squared. So we just get um, minus 100 over x squared. And that's equal to 0. So we can go ahead and solve this. Uh, let's add 100 over x squared to both sides, and we get 1 equals 100 over x squared, and then times both sides by x squared. So x squared equals 100, and then take the square root of both sides to, to find what x is, and we have that x equals 10. Um, there's also a solution x equals negative 10, but in this context, we have physical side lengths, like it's an actual distance in real life, and it doesn't make sense to have an actual side length of negative 10. Uh, so we're just going to consider the x equals 10 solution. Uh, okay, so x equals 10 is the only stationary point. We kind of know what's going to happen. This is going to end up being a minimum um, of the perimeter, but just, just to be sure, just uh, since it's good practice to do this, we're going to do the second derivative test and verify that this is in fact a minimum of the perimeter. Um, so let's let's take the second derivative of the perimeter, p double prime, and to do that we just have to take the first derivative and differentiate it again. So that's one minus a hundred over x squared, and we got to differentiate that again. Um, so the one goes away, and then and then uh, 1 over x squared, that goes to, um, why don't we, <laughs> let's, let's write this out. So, so the 1 goes away, and we've just got a negative 100 times the derivative of 1 over x squared. And the derivative of 1 over x squared is just negative 2 over x cubed. So we can go ahead and multiply that out, and we get 200 over x cubed. All right. So now we'll plug in our stationary point, p double prime of 10, and that's equal to uh, 200 over 10 cubed. Just plug it in for x there. And um, we, can, we can go ahead and, and simplify. That's, that's, that's 200 over 
a thousand, which is equal to two over 10, which is equal to one fifth. Um, but the main takeaway is that it's bigger than zero. Um, and we could have seen that initially without simplifying, uh, but just for the, the sake of clarity, we simplified. Um, that's, that's bigger than zero. So that means this critical point uh, or the stationary point is a minimum. Okay, great. So that's what we wanted. We wanted to minimize the amount of fencing, minimize the perimeter. So we have verified that the stationary point is a minimum. And so this is our solution. X is 10. Uh, let's, let's draw another bit of the diagram here. So X is 10. And Y, uh, let's look back to where we found Y. Y equals 50 over X right over here. Um, that's what we saw for in our constraint equation. So Y equals 50 over 10 equals five. So our solution is that we want um, one side of length 10 and two sides of length five. And there we go. That, uh, these are the dimensions that, that minimize the perimeter of this yard um, while, while ensuring that it has an area of 50 meters squared. In the future, we'll also learn how to solve optimization problems which are similar but where the shape is something other than a rectangle.